I was till I put on the mask. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. I am the Mass Investor. Thank you guys very much for tuning in right now. No matter what time it is, no matter where you guys are, I do appreciate you guys for being here. And if you guys have not yet, guys, smash that like button, press subscribe, engage the video, and hit that little bell notification, ding, right there so you get the notifications when I do post videos. Now, as you guys do know, we have had several different financial institutions, hedge funds that have already seen the doors close or have already shown signs of top talent leaving, aka it's beginning to the end for those hedge funds. The average hedge fund lasts for roughly three and a half years, but that's okay. What I do want to show you guys is a quick video of the last time we saw it happen, what it looked like, and how you can have several different institutions fighting each other to stay alive. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, and, and talking to people in the street about it, Kate, I mean, uh, one thing seems to be sure, Goldman Sachs has won again. Uh, you know, G Goldman Sachs is the one that looks like they have come out of this smiling. Well, of course, as the market showed you yesterday, Nomura in Japan, Credit Suisse, they were left not only holding the bag, but probably some of the credit risk as well. Now, this is very interesting, right? Because you have financial institutions, hedge funds, banks, whatever you want to call them, making other financial institutions, other banks hold the bag. You often hear about retail investors being bag holders, but no, you see when things get tough, it's a dog eat dog world. And I am waiting for something along the lines of this to happen in this current market. Let's keep listening. But Goldman getting out in front of the gate, right? As soon as the gate opened, they were selling hard, and it reminds me of the mo the movie Margin Call. You know, by 8 a.m., we got half the position, and by 11, you're out. Now, look at this, okay? Look at this. This is competition at its finest. This is how deep it went, okay? These guys met up together, and they said, you know what? We're going to meet and figure out how we can basically unload these positions together. They had a meeting, and after the meeting was done, on the next Monday, Goldman Sachs like, fuck y'all, and just started fucking selling. They're just like, we're out, we're out, we're out. They went down 1.5%. Deutsche Bank, 1.9%. Morgan Stanley, 2.8%. You know who didn't get the heads up? You know who came up late to the party? You know who didn't get picked up? Credit Suisse and Nomura. They got left hole in the bag. That's billions of dollars. But let's keep it going. And Goldman looks like they're a winner. Yeah, it's interesting. I uh, I talked to a sort of veteran prime brokerage executive and a person who had run um, markets groups in the past yesterday. And the guy said to me, of course, he didn't want to be named with this kind of blue language, but he said, this whole situation to me is like a string of, are you effing kidding me? Like, why uh, <laughs> risk management in, in this person and many people's view sort of absent at Nomura? What happened at Credit Suisse? Um, it does seem to your point, Brian, that Goldman and Morgan Stanley uh, handled this with uh, pretty good risk management apparatus and ended up uh, with, with immaterial losses, if any, on the Goldman side is what we know. And Morgan Stanley hasn't said anything about potential losses, but our sources tell us uh, that the expectation is they'll be minimal, if any. So yeah, I mean, the, the management or, here seems to be sound. Kate, can I, can I flip it a little bit too? Kate, Kate, can I flip it a little bit? Yes, you can, Just Go ahead. talking to people as well, and, and there are some that, that out there that believe, and we, don't, we probably will never know, Goldman Sachs may have made money here. Dog eat dog world. It's not just retail versus institutions. It's every man for them. When it comes down to the actual dollar, every man for themselves or woman or person, don't even, don't, don't get me in that. Okay. All right. Every person for themselves. Stop it. So I reported on that yesterday. I think that's always a possibility. Um, I think they're still unwinding the trade a little bit. So it remains to be seen exactly where they end up, but it's possible. You know, Leslie, and here's the thing about Goldman Sachs and Bill Wong is that they, he got in trouble, had some SEC issues related to mm -hmm. Hong Kong listed stocks. I think that was 2012. Gosh, it's almost 10 years ago. Anyway, right. he was kind of banished by Goldman Sachs, right? They're like, well, we're not going to do business with you. At some point in the last few years, somebody let him back in, right? Some sales traders like, boss, please, he's a big money, he's safe, yep. I'm sure. They brought him back in, and, and now this. I mean, th this was sort of a round trip for Bill Wong and Goldman yeah. Sachs. Yeah, it, it just goes to show you what the prospect of significant fees can do for your reputation. Um, but no, you're right. Uh, it has been reported that, you know, he did not pass muster with Goldman Sachs's reputational committee. Uh, however, he did have agreements all over the street. We know of at least six prime brokers that he was dealing with. Uh, and you bring up kind of the, the who gets ahead here with regard to those prime brokers. Uh, the FT actually published an article 
overnight looking at how the the main um, prime brokers that he was dealing with actually met last week and had a conversation about how to orderly unwind the trades and make sure that you know everything was was done in an orderly fashion um, and then you know certain firms yeah. broke ranks they sold earlier of course it's kind of like a prisoner's dilemma kind of situation there um, you know with regard to just the psychology of, of banning together as a team yeah. versus kind of oh oh there's no team oh there is no team whatsoever do not get it twisted whoever got caught holding the bag at the end of the day Nomura and Credit Suisse you got royally bent over the stock market and I know there's kids listening, so I'm not going to say those words, but you know where the rest of that goes. Going rogue for your own benefit. So um, really interesting behind the scenes stuff going on. You know, well, there's and, also and, a domino Kate, effect really that occurs cast... here, right? Yeah, go ahead. Well, no, sorry to interrupt. I was just going to say there's a domino effect that occurs when, as Leslie noted, you know, some broke ranks. So you had kind of Thursday night to Friday morning, two key prime brokers in uh, Credit Suisse and Morgan Stanley declaring yeah. uh, Archegos in default. And that actually triggered a technical aspect of the, the prime brokerage contracts with others that allowed them to default Archegos as well. And that's when the asset seizure and the massive sales began. And, and so much of this is is on this swap market as well, Kate, and, and uh, you know, and probably triggered just by that Viacom CBS secondary. I don't want to scare anybody, uh, Kate, and you don't have to comment on this if you don't want to, this is related to Viacom and Discovery, and no offense to them, not exactly high-powered stocks. I have said that Tesla is the most important stock in the world, and I don't say that because the stock's been on fire or I like the cars. I say that because when you look at the sort of dark underbelly of derivatives, ask any trader out there on swaps and derivative desk. So much is tied to Tesla or, or a few other big technology names. Mm. I think the bigger story here may be What's the bigger risk on bigger names? And how many derivatives and swaps and synthetic positions are placed on things we have no idea about? Right. And of course, this guy's asking questions and they're just like, uh, I don't even want to answer this. 30 more seconds, guys. Here we go. The reason that uh, market participants like to use these complex products like swaps is to give them some anonymity. And with that comes the nimbleness to be able to get in and out of positions without moving stocks as much as you would if your position were public. That said, it's interesting you bring up uh, Viacom CBS not being exactly a power stock. I did some reporting on that name yesterday because I wanted to understand what the fundamentals were. And uh, mm -hmm. one analyst I spoke to said, you know, it's so interesting. What, uh, what we noted in the analyst community who follow these media stocks is not so much the fall of that price of that stock last week, but the rise. There were, there were no fundamentals yeah. to support a price that was pushing $100. Um, there was this offering in the market that you mentioned. It was it was new equity and all. Okay, so we'll leave it there, guys. I think that's the basic point of it, right? So as you guys can tell, what we could potentially see is a doggy dog world. Is a is huge sell offs. It's huge positions being liquidated based off the fact that people can get caught in over leveraged position, as we have seen with Archaeos Capital. We could potentially see with several different institutions, family offices again. All right, so that's what we got for you guys right now. Of course, my name is TMI. I am the mass investor. If you guys have not yet, guys, smash the like button, press subscribe, and of course, let me know your thoughts, all right?